Hey everybody, uh, DJ's on the block here, coming at you from Meta Sports League Studios. We got Glenn Gray. And we've got Manuel Jordan and David Burns. My name is Todd. We talk Web3, um, basically anything to do with NFTs, crypto, um, and some random topics mixed in there, sprinkled in there. Okay, boys, we've got our big timer. Eight All right, minutes. Let's start it. What are we going to talk about first? I think we're going to talk go down, AI. Yeah, let's go in order. Let's go okay. down the list. Okay, boys, let's start. Uh, I, I just want to know, um, I just found out about AI not too long ago, and I, I think it's absolutely amazing. And um, it's been around here for, what, now almost half a year? It's been introduced? I, I think, well, I think it's been popularized since then. Is that? But it's been yeah, around I mean, for a AI, long time. Yeah, I mean, AI has been around for a long time. Um, but it's just getting Mainstream, smarter and though. smarter, and they're, they're, uh, it's, it's able to, like, take on world-class chess, you know, um, what do you call it? chess, chess masters. masters? Chess masters, yes, and beat them, um, and it gets smarter and smarter. And there's there's some. Um, but is that cheating? The, that's the, the that's the, well, the crazy it's a thing. different I mean, opponent. Yeah. It's it's something that learns. So with every wrong move, it learns, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Like um, somebody was saying uh, all that chapter stuff, right? Now I I don't want to get into you know like uh, conspiracy stuff, but. But why they, not? I don't know. <laughs> That's why we're here. I can't stand that stuff, but whatever. <laughs> uh, but they were saying, like, the chapter is really uh, AI learning, right? So when you go and you click on a tree, a boat, it's all coming oh, back. Oh, the captus? Ca yeah. Captcha. Okay, captcha. Yeah. Captcha. Yeah. So that is, it's all going back to feed AI. <laughs> right. So you can do uh, self-driving cars. Right. So you can do so it can recognize, you know, somebody in the crosswalk. It can recognize what a tree is, a car is. I, I think it like even Google. You know, if you go to Google Maps, you'll see like numbers blurred out. You'll see like certain things, faces blurred out. You know, like so that you can't see. And I think that's part of it too. Captures yeah. like learning things that humans identify, and then they can use that information to either wipe it or or use it in in driving and things like that so i think i mean the whole thing is it's going to make things easier right for us and it's going to be able to learn a lot of information that maybe we ourselves would not have learned but how is it going to help our kids kids are already lazy as it is right <laughs> now you got ai in here another they're topic. doing paper another topic. Well, i'm just saying Jesus like Christ. you you can add you can put whatever <clears throat> subject you want and, and they're doing paragraphs essays right. so i'm just saying so you're talking chat gpt and right. so yeah. that that's like <clears throat> which is which is really truly an amazing thing because it it's is. it's scoured the entire yeah world well, I mean, we played internet with that, of information uh, a couple weeks ago yeah right we had it we put in all these things yeah. about NFTs and stuff and it spit out like a 500 word essay <laughs> we, that was we asked for good. we asked for topics <laughs> yeah. for the show <laughs> yeah we're like holy cow this thing is pretty good and in depth well but, does it, I mean I'm just saying how is that I know it's going to help us right in the future for sure. But is it helping our younger generation? Like you said, self-driving right. cars, self-essays, everything else. How is that actually going to help? That's kind of up to us, isn't it? I don't how, know. how are we using it? I don't what know. are we using it for? Are we using it, you know, to, to cheat, cheat on, tests? on something, to cheat on tests? Or are we using it, you know, to better investigate a topic that you're sure. trying to get into? Sure. Are you using it to, you know... To do something productive, right? So honestly, I mean, that's the question. Honestly, what I just because I'm putting up a new website for um, for my business, <clears throat> and I asked ChatGPT, um, explain the benefits of a root canal because I'm a root canal specialist. And sure, sure as shit, it's looked through like all the information that's on the internet and has given me like this really super awesome concise paragraph. So that's something where I don't think I'm cheating because i i could write it myself that's fine but it's but it actually has looked at looked at a lot of things that maybe i yeah. wouldn't have thought of you know i'm gonna i'm gonna adjust it but that's that's right. a situation where um at least it, it kind of gives you a baseline and then you can yeah you do have to check it for facts because it yes. just pulls information it, it does can be right or wrong right so but um, but what what it what you described it doing is actually one of the things that people are kind of worried about it it that replaced, you know, that's yeah. something you could have hired somebody to perform that service for you. Right. Well, all this and is going to get rid of middlemen. Well, it's going to get rid of, of a lot well, of jobs. But that, that's, not a, that's not a middleman. No, that's a that's, creator. That's true. That you'd, true. You'd, you'd, you'd be I mean, all, out on. already it's like you know, libraries are, are like going to be a thing of the past. I mean, you know, once the Internet hit, nobody went to libraries. 
right. you know, you used to look up books and you'd scour articles right. and you'd like you get the you old microfiche like, out. Yeah, this is like <laughs> you know streamlining it even more. Yeah, you know, and I don't know that we're better for it. Hmm. Well, you know, ideally, that opens you up to do other things. It does. And, I mean, I, and, and, but, and then the question becomes: Is what are you doing with that extra with that extra time, or what, well, what are you what are you going to focus that that's on? That's one of the things. Positive, I or? remember when um, when you know kids were young, right? They were talking about how schools now are teaching kids to, th- and they're supposed to be teaching kids to think, right? Because the jobs that they're training for right now haven't even been invented, right? So that's kind of along this line. You know, it's like with ChatGPT or, or AI. Ninety uh, percent of the web content is going to be auto-generated. Right? I think, yeah, a lot of it is already. <clears throat> uh, copywriting, like all these things, you know, web content for your website. You hit this thing, you put in a couple facts, and and it spits it out. So you're lo- we're losing certain jobs, but hopefully on the on the back end, it's going to create others. Now, hopefully, it's not hunting down cyborgs and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, I mean. We've got ways to use this uh, AI. You've got automated weapons that are already in use, right? Uh, you've got facial recognition uh, that uh, I read an article where uh, NFL teams were using it to keep people out of their stadiums. Sure. Right? I mean, there's... Well, I mean, I mean, China has so many cameras that, that, <clears throat> that they... Public cameras, like everywhere, yeah. they can... Even and in the, the big data sets, they, they can, like, yeah. see who, who Iran who is using are. it. Uh, yeah. Really, a lot now for uh, the protesters. Yeah, uh, I mean it's it's crazy, you know, how they're using it to identify people and then yeah. knock on their well, door and it, take them away. I think also it's going to be part of the educator educating the kids and the next generations coming up how to utilize this type of uh, technology and how it can benefit them, but in a way where it's more not cheating, right? It's not just get writing an essay. It's actually learning about AI and being able to utilize it in the future for for good. And I think like speed of learning. Like yeah. it, it could help with the speed of learning. But the thing that I am more concerned about is like like the the dark side of it is that like the deep fake stuff, like we can't even believe what we see anymore. And, and right. that, I, I don't know if you guys ever saw this. I, I'm just gonna throw this up there, but this is a this is a deep fake if you don't look <laughs> at this guy, look at Morgan Freeman. I am not Morgan Freeman. What you see is not real. Well, this is a deep fake. Yeah. No, what I what I heard about that stop that quickly. Yeah. Um, what you is that um, in film they're they're using it for if there's a foreign movie, right? You you don't yeah. have you right. don't have subtitles Subtit- anymore. Right. Now they go in, they map out your facial recognition. They have uh, and and now you have Tom Cruise speaking Swahili. And it's seamless. Yeah, it's just yeah. setting up the program, and there you go. Yeah. So you know, I think in the end, we're done with our time here. But I, you know, I Let's think the trick up. is going to yeah. be how we use this technology. You know, it's like it's mm-hmm. like a lot of the stuff we've talked about. It's like it's this amazing technology, and we're not really sure how to use it yet. Well, AI is definitely here to stay, and uh, so is ChatGPT. So yeah. more to come. Yeah. Thanks, boys. Let's move on to our next topic. All right, okay. let's reset the timer. I'm going to reset the timer. Before, before we do that, I'm going to just double check and make sure that everything recorded. Okay, perfect. <laughs> For those Good just one. tuning in, we've had some issues. Before, technical difficulties. And so, but we've learned. We are evolving as a I, I think we put in of, four hours last time for not, but that's okay. Oh, no. It's the, never The not, experience not, that yeah. we gain yeah. from that yes. is invaluable much good. more valuable right david uh time out guys dude i was talking last night to to a, a guy uh that was on my kids hockey team and he oh. works for big data and um <clears throat> and in, so like these big healthcare yeah. companies that collect all the data on all patients and deaths and da 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 and um and essentially they can get it down based on your blood test and your like a genetic test, if you continued that same progression, yep. get it down to like months of when you're going to die by actuarial data. So if you have enough data, mm-hmm. you can predict, closely predict. predict. A, a and and, and the outcome. reason yeah. for that, that they want that and do that is it's all about insurance, life right. insurance and, right. and medical insurance and like what yeah. 
the, all the actuarial tables to figure out, you know, how is the insurance company going to make money on you? See, you, you, know. you, you talk about, you know, um, or we talked about before about, you know, utilizing resources to do something else. What if there wasn't ins health insurance that you had to pay for and everybody had insurance? Okay. Yeah. What could those people running all those numbers be doing that could be positive for society instead yeah. of, you know, keeping us freaking under? <laughs> do you remember? Yeah. There was a Fuck great, sake. it was a great commercial and it was for, um, it was for one of the uh, gaming companies, and it's like we've got this technology that we could use to cure cancer, and we, you know, it's all the and, and they go into all these things. It's like and then we thought, eh, let's just make a game, you know, <laughs> and it was it was hilarious, you know, because it was all this stuff with like all this the power of this technology we could solve world yeah. hunger, or do all well, like that's eh, what I mean. Let's make a game. Move the actuarial people into, yeah. into crypto mining instead. Right. I mean, think about all the resources that that these companies as kind of middlemen yeah. between between things there, i mean there's so then you you have to like retrain people and where where do they go and yeah. but i think Man, that's part of it would you want to know the when, when you you're die? gonna die yes i so, that's so a that, great that, topic that's I, a great I, topic. I, I actually think you do Be, that, because that as a topic it doesn't time, mean yeah. That you can't change the trajectory because all this data is just saying you're at this point and this is your trajectory or this is your trajectory mm -hmm. and this if you do nothing looking at billions of people on the place on the face of the earth that have existed over the last 20 years 30 40 50 years you're dead here what was interesting is i, I also saw this other guy that was a human biologist a physiologist that started a, a company this health company for people like certain things that can kind of change your trajectory trajectory he said like okay so say you're misdiagnosed say you have a vitamin d deficiency and your your hands and knuckles and knees they all feel achy and sore and you get misdiagnosed not as a <clears throat> vitamin d deficiency but as having the start of rheumatoid arthritis okay you're so you're here you get misdiagnosed you get put on you get put on a corticosteroid well, that changes your trajectory here. Okay, now all of a sudden you have to have a joint replacement. Now you've decreased your mobility. Now your, your trajectory is here. And they can tell that if you follow this path, you're going to die here. But if it was misdiagnosed? If you knew that based, let's say, let's say you put, went on a steroid and then they, they gave you your data and you say you're dead in 10.9 years. Well, shit, I don't want to follow that trajectory. So now... Let me change here. So it's it's all about preventative medicine, really. So do you need so to be able to check in on a daily basis and be like, you I don't know, think so. Yeah, I think you would do I like think a, I'm going to take up cigarettes. <laughs> I think. You know, and then how you does just, that look on my just, table? Yeah, right. How and many years am I losing? See, you start to go down. But, you're but like, whoa, 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 no, yeah, no, but no. they combine. They com five minutes of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I heard. I'm just saying. The, yeah, I mean, they combine the gene now the newer genetic testing and mapping of the human genome. They can really correlate that between that and the, like the 50 some blood markers they can correlate that look at put it in the big data sets and like we were talking about earlier this is all being done mostly because insurance companies want to make money um, right. and they're betting on you know when 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 are we going to have to pay out this money so it would it would they need to it know. Would stand that uh, a separate business could come in and say we're going to help you increase your uh, longe longevity. Yeah, longevity. Right? So they're going to be like, you know, okay, here's where your markers are. So it's kind of the, the anti-insurance place, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so they're going to be like, all right, here's what you're going to do. Here's our strategies to, to do a, something different. Yeah, yeah, judging on this, your body is, you know, down in vitamin D, and you mm. need to do that. And then you need to, you know, do crossword puzzles. I don't yeah. know what it is. You need to. That, that's where life hacks would, would have a different meaning, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. You could hack uh, your let's hack start. curve. Let's yeah, start. Exactly. Let's start. We're, we're, this, is over, this is overtime. We'll put this at the end of the podcast. Let's keep going. Yeah. I, I, it should I, be I, a topic for, for another podcast. We, we can. already got, it, got started. But yeah. we got a lot of stuff here. I, I want to say a couple more things about it. And, and just to your point, is that it, if you could diagnose someone and you can see their markers and, and, and a lot of times people they don't have anything quantified right you're just going to take a vitamin you're going to take a multivitamin why why do you need to take a multivitamin mm -hmm. if you're not deficient in certain things you're just kind of 
put taking the my right. multivitamin because right. you think it'll help you. It out. But if you're not quantifying, like the quantified self is figuring out exactly what your blood work looks like, like your genetics look like, w- what are you deficient in, and then only supplement in that stuff, mm-hmm. and then alter your life to um, account for your genetics. Well, that seems smarter to me than, yeah. than just a random. Oh, I'm just going to take vitamin C because I feel sick. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Do you guys I mean, but, do you guys have any idea what the average life expectancy is right now in this day of age? Seventy eight where? years old here yeah. in the U.S. Okay, we're, we're not talking Jamaica. Well, <laughs> just, are you talking worldwide? That's no, what I'm no, saying. just where in the U.S. Okay, do you have any idea? I mean, usually seventy eight. Seventy nine point eight. Yeah, seventy two. 72. 72. Okay. So it's like when you hit 50, you think, okay, well, you know, this is <clears throat> where I've hit middle age. But it's not even true. It's like 38. Yeah. Right? You're like, oh, shit. People don't realize that. People aren't living as long as they used to. Well, some, some, some would say that we, we are down. living longer. Some, but, yes, yes, because some people do. But I think, and I don't know, Manuel, maybe fact check this, but uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> are you the fact checker? Yes. <laughs> What was the average life expectancy 20 years ago versus now? It, yeah, I mean, it was probably in the late 60s, and that's why and why retirement medicine? was 65, because you, you kind of, you know, yep. so the uh, companies the weren't paying pensions for... Yeah, life yeah. expectancy has gone up since then, but in recent times, it's kind of gone down. Yes, yeah. a, so. lot, a lot of it had to do with COVID as well, as they were saying, because mm-hmm. that took a big hit of... Of, of people being sick and dying and so increase that, alcohol abuse <laughs> during well, COVID. But I mean, that's true. So I mean, it seems like you know, back you know, the farther back you go in, in our recent history, it seems like you know, the more um, people seem to age quicker. Have you seen some old shows where like, oh, that dude over there, he was fifty at that time, and you look at him, you go, he looks like he's seventy-five. There's just no way. Like for yeah. example, here's Ken Stabler when he was like in his late thirties. He looks like he's no sixty, and he's playing. Yeah, playing no for way. the playing for the for the for yeah. the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. Look at him. <clears throat> yeah, no, I uh, my mom Genetics. who's, who's eighty three, uh, turns eighty four in May. Um, no, in March. Um, but she was just at a you know a book club, and mm. she was amazed because there's people in her book club, and they're like sixty two. And you know they're hobbling using around, a, around, they're, hobbling they're, around. Yeah, they're using a walker and somebody else, and she's like, "God, I feel pretty good." You know? Yeah. Well, that that's what I'm seeing. Like there, I mean, I'm I, so part of the reason that this came up is I'm looking for business opportunities, and there's a there's a franchise that you can get that does a lot of this hmm. stuff, and so that's Marking. why this this topic comes yeah. up where where they where they quantify you and figure out what your deficiencies are. Um, and then use different modalities, supplement you, and different modalities to to help your body. Yeah. Um, a lot of it has to do with oxygenation, and oxygenation under um, exercise, yeah. and um, and things like like red light therapy. That's in and of itself, it's not the end all be all. But what it does is it allows um, the small vessels to get to carry more oxygen, basically, mm-hmm. to your cells, and so. The, the, the absence of oxygen is the start of disease, and so that's that's kind of why this came up. But then yeah. at the same time I was looking at that, I talked to this uh, guy that worked for Big Data and in, in insurances and say, said that, you know, we can predict, you know, based on these markers, you're going to yeah. die at this point. I love wow. the idea that you can use this to extend life. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, you know, a very uh, small group of people at the top of the food chain that yeah. are able to utilize it. Well, the thing, one thing instead is, of maybe. it being something that is an absolute requirement for every single person, which which is if, with good health health care, should start yeah. with something like this. Well, let's start with what your risks are, and let's start with what your problems could be, and let's start building yeah, you, much more you know, a plan to take care of yourself from here on out. That should be the start of everything, mm-hmm. and, instead and should, of you know you know a bonus at the end that you got to pay extra for. There I mean, should yeah. be, be something honest. also about quality of life, right? I don't want to be eighty eight. Mm-hmm. And hooked up to a respirator and saying, well, I'm still alive, right? I would rather probably just call it quits, pull the plug. Ooh, that's a whole other topic. Well, yeah. well, the, pull the plug. I do well, want to talk about that. Uh, and yeah. we, we should because I'll say this. I've talked to, I don't know, a handful of 80-plus-year-olds because I'm interested in knowing what keeps them motivated, mm-hmm. what keeps them young at heart. And everyone says, well, there's a common um, premise, which is keep moving, 
keep mobile. active. I thought keep it was mobility. non-pareils. <laughs> Well, and those are, you only find those in jars at yeah, old people's houses. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that's funny but, that but you no, say it, that because no, it, this true. guy said too is that keep mobility moving, is the keep key. Moving, you know, yeah. if, as soon as you stop, everything else stops. Well, there was a study done on uh, happiness, right? And and I just read about this recently. And they went through and they followed people for you know seventy some odd years, and they kept checking in and everything. And where they came out was everybody's happiness, and it's not based on money, on social standing, on anything. It was social connections. So, mm. and it could be, it's not that you have to be a social butterfly. You can just talk to the barista. Right. This is why we're doing our podcast. It's, yes. it's, 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 <laughs> we're yeah. extending our life we're right trying, now. now. I don't know that this is making me happy. <laughs> but damn it, but, it's extending my life yeah, right now. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I want it to end sooner. <laughs> I got to go. In three okay. minutes. Yeah. In three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. Please. Dear God. But, but no, it's but social I think, connections, yeah. you know, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, I think that's that's a big part. I mean, if you're mm-hmm. a recluse or something like that, I, I just don't think you're. It's, a, it's, it's like you got to have something that brings you joy. Hey? Yeah. And you got to mm-hmm. stay connected to what brings you joy. And, and if you lose those connections, you got to find new ones. Yeah. Some some sort of purpose. Well, I agree. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yesterday, my wife and I are sitting there. Kids are going to basketball. Madeline's doing some wrestling meet, and she's the manager for, for the wrestling team. And I was saying to my my wife, I'm like, isn't it going to be sad when Madeline's gone? She's going to school next year. I mean, think about this. In mm-hmm. four years, our kids are gone. And I said, listen, this is what it's going to be like. I mean, we're yeah. going to miss the laughter. For sure. We're going to miss the singing in the background. We're going to miss the bitching. We're going to miss the dirty <laughs> dishes, right? We're going to miss all this stuff. But the thing is, is there's different chapters of your life, right? And mm-hmm. so you have to just kind of know what makes you happy. And so that brings me back to different chapters, how does that actually elevate your life? Because ch- life changes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's just a lot of different steps, and being happy is the most important thing out of life because if you're not, well, that's just a miserable existence. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, laughter is huge. I mean, yeah. like... I mean, you make me laugh all the time. <laughs> just <laughs> looking at my this face. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not but, true. But, uh, yeah, that, I mean, laughter... Um, Optimistic, positive outlook changes everything, I think. Um. <laughs> Having a positive outlook is, is important because with things changing as yeah. much as they do, the yeah. things that bring you joy now may not be available for you to well, that's get a, joy that's from them in the future. That's so you I'm have saying. to be positive and, you know, go back you have to, to the adapt. Monty Python. You have to adapt. You have always, to adapt. You know. I'm not sure it's a positive outlook. I just have who a sense I, of humor. Because who, who, who <laughs> I'm not sure out, the outlook is you, that positive. How, can, how could you have, you know, a good sense of humor... A healthy sense of humor and not be positive. No, true. But who, uh, let me ask you this: Is, is that possible? Who knows? Yeah, who knows possible. of negative? It makes you like, he- healthier too. I mean, like who, back who, to that. Topic. Who actually knows? Like somebody that you associate with that's negative. That's an energy sucker. <laughs> that just sucks all the energy. Every time you're out with that person, you're just like dreading it because you know it's how bad life sucks, how it's not fair, how it's unjust, how someone screwed them. Yeah. How yeah. you know it's like. Everybody's against so, them. That's what, do you guys like hanging out with those people? Absolutely not. So I think that that has a lot to do with, um, you know, just kind of like your circle of friends. Um, I think you have to be careful. There's people out there to sabotage you and, yeah. and not even knowing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if, if, if your friends aren't bringing you joy and you get no joy from hanging out with them, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of that going yeah. on. And not with me, but, you know. Sometimes those, I see you those guys. people are <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I, yeah, back to the whole longevity. I think doing <laughs> doing things like this and 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 um, um, looking for options to make ourselves healthier and happier. I mean, I want to be around here for a little bit. You yeah, know? like mm-hmm. I've had friends. I had a good buddy of mine that died um, not because of COVID, but during COVID. And um, you know, life is a lot. When that happens, life seems mm-hmm. a lot shorter. So. Let's let's remember to, to put a topic of uh, pulling the plug. <laughs> when we're ready. Pulling the plug. Yeah. Pulling the plug. That's what yep. I'm thinking. Okay, boys. Are we going right into that? No. Oh no, my God. That might be tomorrow. <clears throat> okay. Welcome back <laughs> to DGens on the Block, where we talk crypto, Web three, and other random topics. We got Glenn Manuel and David, and my name is Todd. And uh, let's talk a little crypto this time. Let's talk about markets and the crypto winter that we've been in. That's really sucked. Yes. Um, and really has hurt a lot of folks. 
hurt our project um, as well. <laughs> and uh, but it. there there is there is some hope on the horizon. Um, I have a a number of guys that I like to follow and. Um, uh, one in particular young guy um, that just seems to have been on and called a lot of things that uh, retrospectively looking back, he has his own kind of set of marker, markers and things like that. But that he says, we are coming out of this bear market, this long and grueling bear market, and that over the course of the next four months, things are going to be really turning up. It's not going to be overnight, but it's going to be churning up. And so, do you want to uh, play that clip? And let's and play let's... the clip. Uh, I don't know. We'll cut out the clip if there's too much in there, but I'm going to play it for maybe a few minutes. Yeah. And then uh, we'll cut it up, and then uh, and then we'll start our timer. And talk a little bit about yeah. it because I want to talk about also our project, and you know, when is the best time to really push it and release it? Love it. So, yeah. Okay. So this is this is Stargate. This is Stargate. We're covering is the USD Tether market cap against the total crypto market cap. And we had laid this out a couple of weeks ago saying, hey, this chart is going to tell us when we're entering into a bull market because the last time that some key things happened in this chart, that signified every single bull run and every single bear market as well, too. So let's dive into it. So for those of you listening, he's looking at Tether versus green circle, this yellow circle and this red circle. So this total uh, market cap to like mid 2018. What I believe is we're traveling in this channel right now. And it's been going on for about like four to five years now. And how we read this chart is when the, the USC Tether total market cap goes down compared to the rest of the total crypto market cap, that means that we're heading into uh, a big bull run and prices for the crypto assets are exploding. It is extremely bullish. So I'm gonna grab this trend line up to here. At this point right here, December 2020, that's when Bitcoin rallied hard from like 10K to 66K in a matter of some months there. A couple months, it really was fast. And what we are doing right now as we speak and what we tracked weeks ago was this trend line. And we had said, hey, something big's happening here because if we break this trend line, we are gonna head into an all out bull run and the bear market is over and boom. That's exactly what happened. This broke that trend line back middle of January. The crypto market is gonna go into an all out mania mode. And keep in mind, we're looking at the bigger picture here. It's not like gonna go into mania mode tomorrow or what, right when you watch this video, maybe in the next couple of days. We're talking over the next couple of weeks to the next couple of months. And what I believe is going to happen is we're gonna go into a mania mode all the way until like around May, late April, around May, same thing that happened back here. Then all of a sudden there's gonna be event, an event. Something is gonna happen around the middle of the year that causes this chart to just like shoot up. And I believe we'll go into a correction for summer into maybe the fall, August, September. And then when October rolls around, that's when we go on our run number two and this pulls back down and we, we go into a run at the end of this year to go up even higher. Okay. I mean, I think that's enough, but <clears throat> um, this guy has been pretty accurate on a lot of his calls and he has his own software and things like that, that where he's, you know, different trading pairs and whatnot. Um, but I think this is a, <clears throat> I think we're, 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 I sense the excitement right now. Just getting online, seeing, seeing what I'm seeing. I think there's an excitement that the, the Bitcoin maxis too now, as they're starting to say, again, things like Bitcoin to a hundred thousand, Bitcoin to blah, 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 blah. And so, um, you know, as that hype machine starts to roll up, I think it's a perfect opportunity for us to start here, start at the ground floor, and over the course of the next four months, release our project once and for all. Mm -hmm. And um, I think <clears throat> it's, as we all know, catching momentum is is everything in the NFT the world. Timer. Yeah, let's go to the timer. So uh, to, to clarify a, a bear market, um, it's, it's said to occur when assets um, decline 20% or lower, right? And um, <clears throat> we've seen it across the board this last year. You guys yeah. do it again, Todd. 
It um, it hasn't been good, and, and like Todd had, had mentioned, that um, you know we, we do have a, a Metabutes project that we are waiting to release, and and when is the right time to release that project? Right. So, right. Um, yeah, I, I think that um, we've, we've hit the bottom. I think we're coming out of it slowly. Um, there's some great crypto uh, coins to buy, and um, it's just knowing what you, you're getting yourself yeah, into. Yeah, and you're starting to see a few of these little altcoins, like your magic yeah. coins, start to pop. Yep. And that's what happened previously before the other the the uh, bull run, mm -hmm. the previous bull run, is you start to see these little coins pop. And there, there's a lot of things on the horizon, too. I mean, I, I know... <clears throat> I'm, you guys know me as a bit of an XRP maxi, and um, you know that that case against the SEC could change everything, depending on the outcome of that, and so that could play into this too. But um, aside from that, there's just a lot more optimism, and I think because the the Fed, even though they raised things 25 basis points, I think that um, they they opened the door to not continuing to raise rates, and so right. and and it seems like inflation is starting to be controlled that's that's debatable because I, all i see is increasing prices yeah but, i mean I, I was just at a financial not something that i go to often <laughs> uh but i was at a financial um prediction luncheon mm -hmm. but everybody was saying that they they see the rates continuing to go up probably uh not they're hoping they're not going to raise quite as many times but yeah. but maybe not cut yeah you know I just have to say, <laughs> I went to go buy a stamp, right, or stamps, um, and that forever stamp, mm -hmm. do you know that is now like 68 60, cents? Yeah, it used to be like 39 cents. So it's had a, like, it, it increased twice in the last five months. It's something crazy like that, like yeah. two increases. Stale mail, 68 cents. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So Did you buy saying, a lot of stamps yeah, before that? Yeah, you're saying you invest in stamps? Increase? No. No, I, I just I just turned around Sold and I said I'm not, I'm not. I'd like to invest in eggs. Is what I'd like to invest in. Mm -hmm. I just eggs are like just invest in chickens. <laughs> True. <laughs> what came first? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> trying to figure but, that out now. But yeah, I mean, I oh, think yeah. I think there's still plenty of inflation. That it's all. I mean, no one knows. No one knows. But I, I'm getting the sense, and my spidey senses are saying things are going to change, in at least in the short term, barring like a major black swan event, like cyber attack or something like that but um, or, or some sort of you know major um legal case that kind of makes things kind of difficult but at the same time you know you think about that when there, there's all these countries including our own they're looking at releasing their own coins mm -hmm. cbdc's yes so yeah, they know, need to you know in, in order the only reason that they, would, that they would jump into that is because they think that something is going to be continued so they would put that investment into if time and resources right. without expecting some sort of a return Meaning well i mean I, yeah i mean i think the banks are facing like this huge liquidity crisis and so like i think that um they're they're <coughs> counting they're they're putting their eggs in the basket so to speak of digital is here to stay and so ultimately they by developing their own CBDCs, they can make their own rules with that. And those CBDCs, that's another topic yeah. that we might have talked about before. Can <laughs> we be don't know if it was captured, can, but can, we did yeah, talk can, about it. Can be completely programmable so that you can right. say, well, we're going to, you know, okay, as incentive to, to come over to this digital platform, we're going to give everyone $2,500 in this CBD, this new CBDC if you come over and set up your digital wallet. Well, shit. A lot of people will say, I want $2,500. So they do that, set up their wallet. Um, <clears throat> but what they might not tell you is that they've programmed their CBDCs to not be used for gambling, for yeah. marijuana use. Can only use. use it for food. Right. Yep. It can only be used for food or, you know, basics. You know, so is that bad? I don't know. Maybe that's good, but it's also a slippery slope down the, well, the control the same, of your money. Isn't it the thing. same thing like these major banks, Wells Fargo, they'll say... Open up a checking account and we'll put in fifty dollars into your account, right? I mean, they want your business, so it's they're, they're incentivizing us. And mm -hmm. like you said, is it is it a bad thing that they're trying to capture where you're spending that money? Who's to say? Um, I mean, if you need eggs and you need food, it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think yeah. you should be able to go use it to go buy alcohol. 
I don't know. I, I think a, regulation hmm. in any form is going to set people oh, off. Oh, for sure it is. Yeah. So, you know. The but it's like food stamps. Yeah. You get food stamps. Can you go buy alcohol? I don't know. If you trade it for money. Yeah. yeah. Can you, <laughs> trade, can you see, trade these for, right. for money? See, see, There's most always pe- a way. Most people have these pro- the problem with the regulation that you're talking about until something happens to them where regulation could avoid that from happening. And then they're right. like, hold on a second. Regulation should be happening. Mm-hmm. And the reason I'm bringing this up is this is related to, uh, to what we're talking about here. Yep. That... <clears throat> The volatility of some of these coins is still something that's somewhat unpredictable because mm-hmm. they are, um, and by volatility, I mean that they're more than volatility. It's, it's a, that they're, they, they they're have the potential to be manipulated. Always. Okay. And, and so that's where, yeah. you know, and, and this is where, you know, I think I was mentioning to you guys, you know, before we started the segment that there had been some research in 2017, 2018, one whale was kind of controlling, you know, the the price of Bitcoin, how it was going up, because they were able to kind of track it and they were able to kind of prove through digitally that this was happening. Mm-hmm. They think something similar is kind of in the process of happening right now, but because things are a lot more complex and there's so many more wallets and all kinds mm-hmm. of other things, it's harder to to track all those numbers like they were able to in 2017, 2018 mm-hmm. uh, um, for, for, the, for that data. So the, the point of that is that if, if those folks still have an interest in what in those coins having some value, that's great. But as soon as they decide, you know, to tank the market, that's where we have another Luna episode happening sure. again, where where everybody, you know, the value of it tanks to nothing. And all these people put all their money into it. It's not gone. <clears throat> well, yeah. What I think will happen is that in, in making these CBDCs, they'll peg it to some sort of commodity. Maybe it's back to gold because that's that's how you don't manipulate it anymore because mm-hmm. it's, it's attached to an actual commodity. And, and I think a lot of times... A lot of people feel that they're going to attach it to a basket of commodities because some nations aren't rich in certain certain uh, natural resources, right? Yeah. So, um, so I think that that ultimately it has to be something that's that's pegged to something real. I agree, and I you think know? that that's the that's the way. Um, so when one of these you know large countries you know puts out a stable coin, and that's where mm-hmm. you're going to see all these other coins starting to tie into it. Say, all right, you're backing that up for sure. You are, yeah. and it's gold or something tangible. Great, we're in. We're going yeah. to tie into you. And that's going to make the market a bit more secure kind of that way. Right. And so I think I, then investment and, and opportunity will still be rising even at that point early mm-hmm. on. So it's, it's I, think I think the we're lesson, going to both. Yeah, no, I, I think the lesson here is never, ever, ever spend what you can't afford to lose because at any given time you can lose it. It's, it's just too early. Yep. It's just too early. But that doesn't mean we don't take take bad chances and risks. Like, you know, take a small percentage of your disposable income and put it towards this. Well, that's what you, that's, yeah. yeah. That's I mean, what you do. That's what you need to do. That's no, what that's, you should that's, do. That's a good yeah. way to end the segment. Yeah. You know, that basically, remember, don't do things more than you can afford to do. Absolutely. Right. So, yeah. because you and, go there with the idea that you might lose good point. it. And, and don't forget to take profits because you can ride these, the, all these, all these uh, mania s- sessions where, where we do this straight up bull run. A yep. lot of people straight up bull run like Doc Hodler, straight up bull run way up to the top, and then you're back down here at the bottom where you didn't capitalize it on it, where you could have sold your NFT for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and now it's worth seven sixty sixty thousand dollars maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, like take profits. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we'll end this segment that way. In that, I I do think we're at the start of the next bull run, and so. If you have some, not financial advice, but if you have some extra income and you want to risk it, now might be the time. But then as it goes up, as that fear and greed index starts to go more to greed, start pulling. Start pulling a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. Pull a little bit out because there's going to be a bear following the bull. Yeah. And I, and I think, uh, you know, this will be a topic we'll continue to cover over the next few months. Yeah. Um, and if there's uh, any experts out there, that would want to come on and uh, give us love their, to have some give some us their guests. take on yeah. some of this. Uh, contact us and, <laughs> and we'll have you on. Mm-hmm. Uh, link is below in the description and um, email below in the description. Um, sign up for our newsletter down in the description. This is DJ's on the block. Be back with another topic. <laughs> Welcome back to DGENs on the Block. That was good. Welcome back. We're going to wrap it up here for this session of DGENs on the Block. We talk crypto, Web3, and some additional random topics. Any last words, gentlemen? I thought it was fun. It was great. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Love, yeah. love hanging out with you guys. Yeah. 
This is good. Yep. It's my happiness. And just think, your great, 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 great grandkids are going to see this. Sorry. I don't know how, but it's not going to be on a TV. <laughs> Sorry. It's going to be like That's on right. a hand or something cool. <laughs> on a hand. All right. Hey, hey, guys, Projecting join us. Join us next week for another DGENs on the Block. Links in the description. Let's join us for, on our newsletter. Take care.